Good morning and uh, welcome here to uh, Drizzly Cheney Manor for today's uh, morning prayer. Uh, I'm really pleased I can be with you this morning. Uh, I'm really, really sorry for uh, yesterday's uh, mix up and how the service uh, turned into a 10 past nine service in the end. Uh, my understanding of Facebook uh, is still rather limited, I'm afraid. So I recorded the service, but whilst I was uploading that service, I had to record onto my laptop and upload it. By the time it uploaded, um, it said it needed at least 10 minutes before it could could actually go on. Uh, and it was just before nine. Um, it took a little bit longer than I anticipated. So I didn't really plan the morning terribly well, I'm afraid. Uh, so I do apologise that yesterday's was uh, not as it should have been, um, but uh, it's there um, for posterity as uh, kind of a bit of an odd one out. Hmm. Excuse me. Uh, I've just popped on the Facebook page, I've just popped the uh, liturgy on for today. Uh, the, we're going to use the uh, common, it's from commonprayer.net, it's from the Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals, I think it's called, um, by Shane Claiborne and a couple of others. Um, if you wish to access that, you can go onto their website or you can download the app. And the app is called, I think the app might be called Common Prayer as well, actually. Um, actually, it just says prayer on my, on my tablet. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely app and um, you can access morning prayer and daily prayer, uh, or midday prayer and evening prayer on it. It's very, very good. Um, also, I, I put onto Facebook yesterday, I've been at a conference kind of thing online, dipping in and out of it, Church of England conference called Digital Labs. It's really good, um, but it, highlight, it did highlight um, on there in between some things on like a notice that highlighted how you can download a, a podcast and uh, it can get, get sent to your phone each day. Um, please don't ask me the technical jiggery pokery, um, but if you if you listen to podcasts, if you put in, I think it's time to pray. I've got it on my phone, which is charging. Um, if you put in time to pray, then there's a, there's a, a midday prayer or daily prayer which I think is released in the morning sometime and quite early on and then there's a night prayer so uh, Compline and at the moment the Compline has been um, yesterday uh, I have to say I led in bed and listened to Compline with um, Justin Welby sounds a bit strange really doesn't it um, but it was a, it was a it's a lovely thing to kind of end the day with literally end the day with. Um, so you can find that there's information about it on the link um, that's on the Facebook page. Do please do investigate it. And there are a few others that I'm going to start putting up on there as well, um, but not all at once. Just a reminder that tomorrow, being Sunday, we have a service at half past nine at Stratton, half past nine at Stanton, and that doubles up as their APCM. Um, and 11 o'clock at South Marston. Please do uh, do feel free to go along to one of those. Uh, we also have our uh, 10 o'clock service here on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you pick it up. Um, just a, also a reminder that the clocks go back today, the uh, night or tomorrow morning overnight. So you get an extra hour in bed. I think that's the way, isn't it? Um, or an extra hour in the morning, depending on on, on what you, uh, depending on whether you, your your body is used to getting up after a certain number of hours sleep. Quite often, this liturgy that we're following today starts with um, some kind of introduction, and it's no different today. The marks of new monasticism, formation in the way of Christ. For many of us, the judgmental, arrogant, legalistic Christianity we knew grew up, growing up has created a suspicion of discipline and order that can lead to a pretty sloppy spirituality. Reacting against the institutions of sickness, we easily find ourselves with little to help us heal from our wounds, 
create new disciplines and carve out a space where goodness triumphs. People who are afraid of spiritual discipline will not produce very good disciples. Community is pretty hip these days. Slightly dated, I suppose. The longing for community is in all of us. We love to long, we love, we long to love and to be loved. But if community doesn't exist for someone, something beyond us, it will atrophy, suffocate and die. Discipline and disciples share the same roots. And without discipline, we become little more than hippie communes or frat houses. We easily fall short of God's dream to form a new humanity with distinct practices that offer hope and good news to the world. Like any culture, we, we who follow the way of Jesus have distinct ways of eating and partying, different from the culture of consumption, homogeneity hom and hedonism. Our homes, our living rooms, even our parties can become places of solace and hospitality for those with addictions and struggles but it does not happen without intentionality. Dorothy Day said, we have to create an environment where it is easier to be good. St. Francis of Assisi is a model for us, not only of what it looks like to follow hard after Jesus, but also how we can celebrate the dis disciplines that have been passed down to us and have become, and become the church we long for, even among people who've given up on church. Our communities should be places where people can detox, whether that be from alcohol, tobacco, gluttony, shopping or gossip. We long for a space that tips us towards goodness rather than away from it. Where we can pick up new habits, holy habits, as we are formed into a new creation, transformed by, transformed by God. And it does give... Um, I'm not sure how I got onto that because that's not at the beginning of the service. Um, I think that's what's at the beginning of October. Let me go back. Oops. I just read something that they have a sorry, they have an introduction for the month, and I've just read that accidentally, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, it reminds us that actually this is a discipline. Every morning, nine o'clock, ten past nine, every, every morning we have this discipline of morning prayer. We have this discipline of something that we're going to do, a time to set aside for God. Uh, our whole day is then kind of devoted to the work that we need to do, that we do in God's name. We strive to come together, not just as a club, there are many clubs and societies that may not have met together for the last six months because of the virus. We have continued to do so in Jesus' name. And this is what we do today. So let us indeed begin our service. If you've been listening to the last few minutes thinking, I can't see this, uh, that was because I was on the wrong page. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The good thing about the app is that you get the music. So let me make sure my volume is turned up. Yep. Just a little excerpt of This Little Light of Mine, one of my favourite songs. This little light of mine. shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. We have this short extract from Psalm 118. 
the Lord is at my side, therefore I will not fear. What can anyone do for me? The Lord is at my side to help me. I will triumph over those who hate me. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in flesh. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in rulers. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Rather than use the, um, the readings that, that are suggested within this, lit that, this liturgy, we will use the, the liturgy, the, the New Testament reading that is found in our daily prayer, um, our lectionary. If you wish to read the Old Testament reading, it's 2 Kings 20, 2 Kings 20. But we're going to move on to Philippians. Now, the other week when we had our APCM, I think we had, um, I think we had this reading. I can't remember if it's this reading, but we had certainly these names. And uh, I do remember. I think it was Richard, Richard Sansom, had to read these names, and I think when he saw it, he kind of grinned at me. You know what I'm like with names. So let's give it a go. Philippians chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 2. I urge you, dear, and I urge Sintich to be the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the Book of Life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. In any and in all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. You Philippians indeed know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent, help, you sent me help for my needs more than once. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that accumulates to your account. I have been paid in full and have more than enough. I am now fully satisfied, now that I have received from Ephroditus the gift you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The friends who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, 
especially those of the Emperor's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. This is the word of the Lord. You know what, I, I, I was having a long conversation with someone on the phone the other day and we were talking about, uh, she was explaining something, quite a sad situation in many ways, but, but there were things that she had noticed. And uh, certain things that um, had sent shivers down her, I think it was a daughter's spine type thing. Things that just seemed like coincidence. And I don't, I don't actually believe in coincidence. I've had quite a lot happen uh, in my life where it would seem like a coincidence. But I think they're either God incidents or they're a response to prayer. Sometimes a prayer that might not even be said, but felt in the heart. Me accidentally, accidentally reading that, um, that that bit at the start of the service today without knowing, thinking it was just a prelude to the service, um, without really knowing that it was something else, I think kind of fits in with this reading, because this reading all, all seems to be about community, uh, of being together, of being thankful, of, of giving and receiving of being content, of looking to do good, of being good in the world, of standing out in the world. And that's what we were speaking about right at the beginning. And this is what we are called to do. As, as Paul writes to the, to the Philippians, um, as Paul writes to the Philippians, he writes to us. Now, obviously, he can't can't express the thanks for what we have given to him but actually there are many of us who can express thanks for the way that uh, I can express thanks let's be honest about it I can express thanks for the way that people have supported me over the last three years or so the same things that Paul says um, the words of thanks I can express to the community here and you will be able to, to different people and different communities as well, the way that we support each other in Christ's name. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The friends who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of the Empress household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. The peace of God which passes all understanding receive, uh, you. The peace of God, which passes, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful reading. I'm just going to return to the liturgy. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Paul Mickey, a martyr of Japan, said, My religion teaches me to pardon my enemies and all who have offended me. I do gladly pardon the emperor and all who have sought my death. I beg them to seek baptism and be Christ baptism and be Christians themselves. It is about standing up and doing good. It is about shining God's light in the world, the light that he's given us. Uh, being ready to shine that. And some people do that in remarkable, remarkable ways. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift before you this day your world. We thank you, dear Father, for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you, dear Father, for the love that we have received from each other and for the love that we have received from you. We thank you, dear Father, for the way that we, even when we feel at our lowest, even when we feel at our loneliness, we thank you, dear Father, that you promise to be with us. You promise to hold us. You promise to lift us. 
Help us, dear Father, be that community which shines your light in this world, a blessing to each other and a blessing to our communities in your name. And we thank you, dear Father, for all of those who continue, have been and continue to be blessings to all of us and blessings to the community and do things in your name. We give you thanks, dear Father, for all that we have, for all that you have blessed us with. We give you thanks, Lord, for the food on our plates. We pray, dear Father, that we will be people of generosity, ready to help put food on other people's plates. We thank you, dear Father, for all those that work to help put the food on our plates. The farmers, the gatherers, the delivery drivers, the folk that work in our shops, markets and uh, supermarkets. So many people, dear Father, that we depend on for our daily needs. We thank you, dear Father, that on the whole we can switch on our lights or turn on our heating and, and it works. We thank you, dear Father, we can turn on our taps and we find refreshment. We find cleansing and healing. We pray for those that are struggling this day, dear Father, to find that. And again, we thank you, Lord, for all those that work towards ensuring that this all happens. Praise and thank you, dear Lord. And dear Father, we lift before you places in our world this day where there is heartache, where there is conflict, where there is hurt. We pray for leaders and people of righteousness and justice. People who will look to bring healing and peace, goodness, wholeness and well-being for all. We pray, dear Father, for women and men to be raised up into positions of political power and influence to help bring your kingdom here on earth. Dear Father, we pray for our schools, colleges and universities. We give you thanks for those who share their knowledge, for those who look to bring um, yeah, share the, the share the gifts that they have to help raise our young people. We pray for all of those working within our schools, universities, preschools, colleges, nurseries, um, playgroups. We ask for protection and wisdom. And at this time where some of them are breaking up for half term, a time of refreshment and sustenance. We especially pray for Nick and Susan, for Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew, Sarah, and Michelle. We ask, dear Father, that you will be with them this day. Help them recharge their batteries. And Lord, we pray for our local schools and colleges, nurseries and playgroups. 
We especially pray for those affected by the virus at the moment, for those who are anxious and nervous, for those that are unwell. And we lift before you the young people that are on our hearts, all those whom we love, all those whom we are thinking about this time. We lift before you Joel and Talitha, Grace and Emily, Jacob and Lily, Jake and Hannah, Oscar, Anton and Kerry, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie and Travis, for Nathan, for Ruby, Noah and Evie. Pray, dear Father, that they, they too will be able to rest, recuperate, and enjoy this next week or so of a break. And Lord, we lift before you those whom are on our hearts who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Those affected by this awful virus. Or those affected or in many different ways from different ailments. We pray, dear Father, that they will feel your healing touch, know your presence in their lives. Where we can be your healing hands, Lord, we pray that we will be so. We also lift before you, Lord, the families of these people. that they may know your presence and your reassurance. We pray for those who are caring for them. For doctors, nurses, pharmacists, care workers, wherever they may be, but also family members, friends, doing their best. We lift before you, especially Robert, and Georgina, Ruth, and Cliff, Christine, Sandra and Eddie, Dennis, Dawn and Robbie, Phoebe, Vicky, Addie and William, Stephanie, Beverly, Roy, Rachel and Julia. Dear Father, we lift before you all those who are mourning this day. For Queen's family, for Isabel's family, Elsie's family, Christine's family and Eric's family. We also lift before you Martina and her mum and their whole family. Pray, dear Father, that they will have an understanding of a, the hope you have set before us, of a place with you, of rooms set aside for each of us that follow you. So we lift before you this day, dear Father, we pray that it will be a day where we can shine your light, a day where we feel your protection and presence in our lives. Pray your spirit may fill us, dear Father, to do your will, to be your people, to be distinct, to be recognised. We pray that, that we will do all things, all the things we say and all the things we do will be in your name. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, help us not to take offence at those who question and judge our works of mercy. Rather, enable us to pray that they too might receive the merciful calling to new life with which you have blessed us. Amen. 
So let's pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I hope you have a great day today. I look forward to um, being together soon. Um, I hope you're able to, I'm not quite sure what the weather's supposed to be today. Another autumnal day, I think, of a bit, a bit, bit of, very, quite a bit of wind, actually. It's quite breezy out there today. A um, bit of rain. Don't think there's much hope of sunshine, but maybe a little bit of dryness. But um, I hope you, whatever you do, I hope you have a good and blessed day. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. God bless. Have a, a wonderful day. And um, I hope to see you soon. Let's finish with some music.